All right, family. Coming to you from the undisclosed location that is, let's say, Canada. I, no, no, no. I, I did the math, okay? I think it's the only country that Seagal doesn't know exists. Hear me out. He is so paranoid about the southern border, he has blinded himself to our brothers in the north. It's a foolproof plan. Speaking of borders, today's episode is titled Above the Border, which I don't know if you know how borders work, but that's not how they work. These assholes are so confused about land borders, they think that there's an above and a below. Nobody tell these guys about how rivers can flow south to north or their tiny little brains might explode. Well, let's go watch this train wreck because this is Red Eye Reviews. We start 80 miles from the Mexican border in the town of Guia Bend. Very, very high intensity uh, area for narco trafficking and human trafficking. I googled this town to see if it's actually dangerous, and I didn't learn anything. I got sidetracked by this amazing question. And yes, you can find Gila Monsters in Gila Bend. It's pretty cool. But while driving on some dirt roads, we see some tire tracks and we are mind blown. Pretty popular area for these guys. Somewhat flat, there's some decent roads. Somewhat fresh tire sign in front of us. So Very fresh. Bend. That is so crazy. You found tire tracks on a road? On a road that you're also currently driving on? That's insane. It's like this was designed for vehicles or something. Do you see these fresh footprints Jeez. going this way? Holy shit, and you found footprints. Bang! Hey, we look like cameraman Grimmy footprints. Grimmy? Have you been trafficking drugs through here? But once they get on the desert between the snakes and the lack of water, a lot of times they don't even make it through the desert. Coyotes will generally promise to drop their human loads at a safe house. Has anybody spotted anything anywhere? They find a ton of trash, which is not surprising because there's trash everywhere, sadly. We don't find any people, though. We do, however, come across a local resident that is not too happy to have us here. Rattlesnake! <laughs> Rattlesnake! Ugh, ugh, ugh. I've heard that sound a few times. Ugh, no thank you. But with our random trip to the desert wasted, we head back into town. How was the desert today, Stephen? Bailey almost got bit by a rattlesnake, so... Yeah, Bailey almost got bit by a rattler. Nah, snakes don't mess with me. I use snake magic on them. So, we get word that some human traffickers, aka coyotes, have smuggled some peeps into town and are hiding out in a house somewhere. A human smuggling vehicle on one of the known smuggling routes we work. One of the people being smuggled. Well, yeah, we smuggled the smugglers to some smuggles and the smuggle vehicle learned about some smuggling. Smuggle. We've come up against bad guys with rifles and guns and the level of violence. Oh, no. I hear people with guns are very dangerous. Would any of you fine fellows know such people? We have another amazing moment from our graphics team, and it is freaking hilarious. Into team will breach the front door where the rest of the team will secure the backyard. Because they show us where Steven will be. Right? Which, you know, they might need a bit more room, but he could probably make that work. We see the plan is to breach the front and have the team out back, keeping Steven out of the way of any real harm. However, they explain the plan to Steven like a parent would when they're having their kid hold the flashlight to quote unquote, help them do something. My job is to try to catch anybody that might try to escape. My job is to try and catch anyone who will escape. Yes, Stephen, that's a very important job you have. All those pesky coyotes are known for trying to escape by running through the cops they're escaping from. It's basic math. So, the super brave army of about 50 people and armored vehicles approach the house. We've made several commands and we've gotten no response. <laughs> They sweep through. They don't find anybody on the first floor at all. Steven is still doing his part. He's great. He's the sole person out here. Don't, no, no, no. Don't look at those other guys. That's all Hollywood magic. Steven is the only guy who can stop bad guys from getting away. Did you not see the graphic? So they check the house. 
thanks to Sergeant Goodboy, they search the rest of the place and they find a room upstairs that is locked. There's nobody on the first floor, but the second floor, there is a locked door that we can't get into. I would suggest simply knocking, but I am a simple man. No, no, no. They plan to tear gas the place. I'm assuming the dog gets a mask as well, and that he's out of harm's way. Fire! Contact. But we see there were three guys in that room. But we did find a gun and some rounds in the room where the three subjects were hiding. And one entire pistol. So, I mean, thank God we brought an appropriate response of firepower this evening, or this could have been dangerous. We have no reason to believe them, so we're sending the dogs to see if there's anybody else in there. We don't believe any of these clothes. And, and it's just like in some of these clothes, you can't share their french fries because they only have a few left. But if you look in the carton, there's like 15 french fries in there. Looking at you, buddy. Looking at you. But they don't find anybody else. We use some old school technology, dog's nose. I think Parker did a great job. You did a great job. He looks a lot like my dog. My dog's just a little bit bigger. Our man, <laughs> he has to be the best in the room. He just one up a dog. <laughs> he just one up the dog. So you think the dog will be able to do some SWAT stuff? Yeah, he's bad to the bone. The next day, we decide to put Seagal's giant dog to the test. Car is my pet, but he's also highly trained for attack. He's got a big bark, so let's see if he has a big bite. Dude, that dog is the exact same size as Sergeant Goodboy. It's like the same breed. Seagal, you are crazy. So Steven's going to send Car out to apprehend a suspect. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah. That does not surprise me in the least. But the dog does great. All of his commands are in Russian because of course they are. He was biting him with his tonsils. He was so deep. Very solid. Hey, man, you get to attack Steven Seagal right now. We're, we're worried about the dog or <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> uh, I, I gotta see that one more time. <laughs> okay, okay. Enough. Here. I think that's it for today. So... The next day, we head out into the desert in search of more people sneaking across the border with drugs. Very, very active border for uh, narco-trafficking and human trafficking. I know, I know. It's, it's a very specific Where's Waldo search, but something tells me we're gonna be successful. We've got a camera system. Typically, they like to bring their uh, marijuana in in backpacks. John, you see anything? Nothing so far. They even have a helicopter. What is the police budget in Arizona? So, surprise, surprise, they find a whole group of people. It looks like we have backpackers. Uh, it looks like they're carrying some dope. Yeah, it's a good thing Seagal was here because this random night, in this one very specific location, we found our totally not actors trying to sneak into the country. But we get together and we decide the next course of action. If you see somebody taking off, getting too far, let them go. I wouldn't recommend anybody run more than 10 yards, man. Don't chase them. Don't run. Nobody ready. I'm not ready. Sakal was really quick to ensure he would not have to exert himself tonight. But we find these guys. They might as well be wearing Screen Actors Guild jackets because there is no way this is not staged. I'm glad you guys stopped us. We were lost for eight days. He's sitting there saying to me, I'm so tired. I was out there for eight days. Oh, good God, Seagal. You are tiptoeing that line of doing an accent right now. And Oh, man, just tread carefully, okay? That's but because we are not the Border Patrol, we can't really do anything here. So we call those guys, and while we wait, we need to keep ourselves busy. So we start admiring each other's tattoos. You got a lot of ink, bro? Yeah. Wow. Thank wow. You. That's amazing. I have a tattoo of a dragon. Oh, I also, I almost forgot. As if this wasn't scripted enough, they also found a dude's cell phone 
with an unread text message that says, So as soon as you get here, we'll pay. As soon as you get here, we will pay you. Come on, at least give us the illusion that this is real. But while waiting, Seagal does what he does. He gets hungry. We've been out here a whole 30 minutes. Our boy needs his calories. So Seagal starts eating his snacks. The other cops are like, now, Steven, you know what we said last time. You cannot eat snacks unless you brought enough for everybody. And he's like, fine, 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 fine. Please, I did. Jesus, yeah. I was going to share. You could be a violent one. We don't know. We learned that these guys got handed over to Border Patrol and they got deported back to Los Angeles with you all. Time to go star in more daytime television shows. But that is it. Let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. Has anybody spotted anything anywhere? They're probably looking at us right now. Oh, yeah. I hear human traffickers love to stick around cops who are being filmed by cameras. Hey, good publicity helps to grow the brand. We just got word there are coyotes inside. They might be armed. It is tense, but I do hear we have footage from inside the house. Let's go there now. Oh, God, it's worse than I thought. Oh, my God. What are they? What is he even? Do? Oh, no. Oh, the humanity. You're never going to catch him. You're never going to catch him. Stop trying. The script is against you. Ugh. It's pointless, folks. It's pointless. That is either the world's largest cop or the world's tiniest criminal. I can't, I can't quite tell. It's a lot like my dog. My dog's just a little bit bigger. Real fast and real aggressive. Bring him out to our training course. My dog is, is really aggressive. He's really aggressive. I bet your wife and kids feel great knowing they have a really aggressive dog at home. That is it. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Leave some comments. I think Canada is a good place to hang out for a while. I'm going to hire a group of beavers and moose, M meese, meeses. We're going to line the roads with maple syrup. I don't think he'll get anywhere near me. If you want to find out what poutine is and why it's freaking delicious, join my Patreon channel. I'll tell you all about it. Or if you just want to support me, I guess you can also join the Patreon for that too. If you want to join the Discord channel, link down below, merch down below, Patreon down below. I will see you all next time. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy. A human smuggling vehicle on one of the known smuggling routes we work. One of the people being smuggled.